Hi, so far we're able to launch our ball, see physics acting upon it and it's bouncing around our board. Now in this video, we're going to be adding a goal to our game because right now you just launch the ball and there's no, no goal. We're going to be adding a hole, which, which is where you try to launch the ball into. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is, in addition to having a ball, I'm going to have a hole. So I'm going to create a vowel hole. It is going to be a new circle. This is not going to be a physics circle because we don't want the hole and the ball to bounce off of each other. This hole is just going to be a background rendered object. We're going to create a point for its position. I'm just going to set it to 80-80, somewhere in the top left corner. And I'll have the radius be 40. And I'm going to make this red. So we have a green for a ball and a red for our hole. Now, I created my hole, but I still have to render it. So I'm going to render the hole before I render my ball. The reason I'm doing this is then we'll first render the hole, and then on top of that, we'll render the ball, which is how it would look in real life. You would have your ball on top of your hole. So now if we run this, we can see that we can bounce our ball around, but nothing's happening when the ball enters the hole. So now we need to implement a check to see whether our hole contains the ball. We're going to implement this in the circle type. So if I go down to circle, I'm going to implement an alternate method for contains, which instead of taking a point is going to take a circle. And the way we can check if one circle contains another circle is see if the distance between their centers is less than or equal to the dis the difference of their radiuses radii. So what I'm going to do is first calculate the the distance between their centers, and since we already have so many methods on point that's super simple, we just take our location, which is a point, and we do distance to the circle's location. And this is where we can see that abstraction layer of having a location come into use because we don't have to s treat physics based circles differently. We just use location and in the case that it is a physics circle, the location will be given by the physics engine. So we first calculate the distance and all we have to do is make sure this is less than or equal to the difference between the radi radii radii. So wh what we need to do here is find the difference between the holes radius and the circles radius. So I'm going to take my own radius and subtract the circles radius. And now I need to make radius publicly. Oh, okay. We already have access to it. That works. Nice. But the compiler, okay, so IntelliJ is not telling me about that error, but the compiler is. It's saying that radius is not a member of circle because we haven't made it public. So to make this parameter public, we just add a val before this. So now we can access the radius. So we first take the circle, the main circle's radius, and then take the circle we're checking if it's within the main circle and subtract that radius because we need to make sure that the circle that we're checking if it is within our big circle we need to make sure that the radius of that is is less than the larger circles radius because we need to make sure that it can actually fit inside so now that we do this check we're ready to use it what i'm going to do is at the end of our tick so we've already rendered everything in the if we if our game has started, then what I want to do is, okay, so we've already started, we've launched the ball, then we need to, cont every tick, we want to check if our hole contains our ball. So if our hole contains the ball, then we want to freeze the game. 
Now with Physics JS, freezing the game is really simple. In world, where's world? There's a method called pause, which will pause the physics engine, and then calling tick on the physics engine won't do anything. So we're gonna add that to our static types, pause, which is gonna return a unit, it's gonna be JS.native. Now we can do that here. So if our hole contains a ball, we're going to take our world and we're gonna pause it. Now, where do you compile? Now if I reload and launch my circle into the ball, it freezes once it's inside and we can actually test it out with a few different places. And we can see here that as soon as the circle is within the ball, we freeze the game. So now we're starting to see a game coming here, but it's still extremely simple because this is all, the boundaries are the only obstacles we have. We have nothing preventing us from just directly launching our circle into the hole. So in order to start creating levels in our game, we're gonna need to create a way to store levels. And that's what we'll do in the next video. I'll see you then.